Amen. Amen. I want the choir to help me with this song. Hallelujah. <clears throat> that what my song will be. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I want you to quickly talk to the Lord. Say, Father, from now on, hallelujah will be my son. Hallelujah will be my son. Victory will be my portion. Hallelujah will be my portion. In every face of mine, hallelujah will be my son. Hallelujah will be my son. The song of victory. The song of liberty, hallelujah, will be my song from now henceforth. Hallelujah will be my portion in every area that I face, in everywhere that I turn to. Let hallelujah be my portion. Let hallelujah be my confession. Let hallelujah be my song in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. You know, in the scriptures, he was talking about a, a, a particular group of people. He said, the people that carried them in captive. And they took them to, by the rivers of Babylon. And the, the song that used to be, that used to gladden their heart. The song that, you, that, 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 that they, they used to sing and they make merry. The enemy now require of them a song. Enemy will not ask for a song from you in the mighty name of Jesus. And that is why you're going to pray that prayer again. Hallelujah will be my song. I will not. Hallelujah is not for people that are in captive. Hallelujah is a victorious chant. Hallelujah is a liberty chant. From today, in every areas of my life, in my finance, in my career, in my marriage, in my academies, Father, let hallelujah be my song. Oh yeah, go ahead and talk to the Lord. Father, from today, hallelujah is my song. Victory is my portion. In every areas of my life, in my career, in my ministry, in my academics, in my marriage, in my business, in, in my finance, hallelujah, I decree, is my song. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Don't worry. We will still have a time to pray. Our Father and the Lord, we want to bless your holy name. Father, we give glory unto your name. 
thank you for guiding us together once again. Thank you, thank you for guiding us at your feet. We know that every time you gather us together like this, you gather us so that you can bless us. Father, we thank you. We return all the glory unto you. Father, accept our praises and thanks today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let your word today illuminate our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let your word chase away every darkness that exists in our life up to this moment in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. By the close of service today, let no man, let no woman, let no boy, let no girl go without being blessed today in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. Everybody that came to the church with us today, by the time you are through with us today, let all bodies be lifted in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let all problems be solved in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be in the name of God the Father, Amen. the Son, Amen. and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And Father, we empty ourselves before you. Whatever will stand between us and our blessing today. Everything that stands between the pulpit and the pew. Father, today, by your blood, clear them away in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. Every iniquity on our hands, every impediment, every field that exists in our life that will make you not to look down to us and, and release your blessing unto us. Father, remember Calvary and have mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let your name alone be glorified. Amen. And let all the blessings be hers. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Let the living soul shout a louder hallelujah. I want you to shake out with one or two people beside you say congratulations. For making it to church today, God will visit you. And your story will change in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you believe, shout a bigger amen. amen. Let's please be seated in the presence of the Lord. The Lord bless us mightily in Jesus' name. I want you to open your Bibles with me to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 7. Uh, we're reading verses 1 and 2. 2 Kings chapter 7. 2 Kings chapter 7, we are reading verses 1 and 2. As you have opened to that 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 1 and 2, uh, just put something there. I also want you to open to the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. But we're going to do the 2 Kings first. 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. If you are there, shout hallelujah. Okay, so I'll read from here. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus seeth the Lord. Tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then the Lord on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God, and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. Praise the Lord. I believe we are in that uh, Luke chapter 1 verse 37. Okay, so I want us to read it together. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. One, two, go. Oh, we are not there. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Are we all there? If you are not there, say, wait for me. Okay, Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Because we are all reading it together. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. I believe we are there now. Okay, can we take it together? One, two, go. God, nothing shall be impossible. One more time. Impossible. Hallelujah. I understand we are in six weeks, Sundays, seven Sundays of glory. Praise the Lord. And the theme is the new level. Praise the Lord. The new level is another level a man can get to in life. 
Praise the Lord. A new level is a, a, a step ahead of where you are. The new level is a level that is better than where you are. A new level is a place that is more glorious than where you presently occupy. The new level is, 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 is that place outside the Egypt. Praise the Lord. Somebody is going to the promised land today. The new level is your Canaan land. But between Egypt and, and your Canaan, between Egypt and, and the promised land, there is a wilderness. Praise the Lord. So, new level is possible. New level is achievable. But there's something that we need to deal with before we can get to our new level. Praise the Lord. And in that portion of the scripture that we read, Luke chapter 1 verse 37, it says, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And that is why God wants to talk to us under a topic, a subtopic, under, the, under our general team, the new level. God wants to talk to us under a subtopic that says, the God of impossibilities. The God of impossibilities. The God of impossibilities is the God of the new level. Praise the Lord. In that 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1 and 2 that we read, it's a, it, it's a story that we can all relate with. At least in Nigeria, we can relate with it. Hallelujah. There was a famine in Samaria. He got back to the level that women were eating their own children. Two women together will gather and say, let us eat my own child today. Tomorrow we will eat your own child. It was that bad. And the word of the Lord came from the, from the mouth of his servant. And he says, he didn't say he, 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 in no distant time. He didn't say uh, soonest. He didn't say very soon. He didn't say in some years to come. What did he say? He said, by this time tomorrow. What has been so bad that God is going to deal with it? And that is why I'm prophesying into the life of somebody today. By this time tomorrow, that impossibility in your life, the Lord would have taken care of it in the mighty name of Jesus. He said, by this time tomorrow, what has been in, 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 in scarcity, by this time tomorrow, it will be in abundance. I prophesy to your life what has been in, in, in what has been scarce in your life by this time tomorrow you will have them in abundance in the mighty name of Jesus your health has been a scarce commodity finance has been a scarce commodity for you peace of mind has been a scarce commodity for you by this time tomorrow God will give you peace in the mighty name of Jesus our God is a God who specializes in impossibility and I am confident to tell you today, no matter what your case is, it can't be as bad as that, as that of Samaria. By this time tomorrow, God will visit you in the mighty name of Jesus. Our God is a specialist in handling situations that people have thought impossible. And there is, there is a good news for somebody here today. God will use your case to prove to the world that he can do all things in the mighty name of Jesus. God used Sarah, somebody who has been barren for so many years. He used a case to prove to the world that nothing can be dead in your life. He said, by this time next year, the angels visited. They visited uh, Abraham and the wife. And after they have eaten, they told, you, they, they told them that by this time next year, there shall be a, 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 a cry of a baby in this house. And you know what? It was, it was something that is, that, is, that, that is impossible. Or it was impossible. Because Sarah said, 
I have even stopped menstruating. My husband cannot, cannot even perform. A man of over 100. Praise the Lord. The wife has stopped menstruating so many years. And somebody now said, by this time next year, you will have your own baby. Sarah laughed. Praise the Lord. And God had to quickly remind her in, in Genesis chapter 18, verse 14. Genesis chapter 18, verse 14, God told her, He said, Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too difficult for me to do? Nothing. God said, I will make way in the wilderness. He said, I will bring out waters from the desert. He, when he, see, when God talks, pay attention to the scripture. He said, I will bring out waters. Not a drop of water. He's not, God is not saying, I will manage to bring out water. He said, I will bring out waters from the desert. Today, if you can say a louder amen, from the desert of your life, God will bring out waters in the mighty name of Jesus. God of impossibility. What is that thing that is, that, that is impossible in your life? What is that thing that you have even given up hope on? What is that, what is that thing that you, that you have concluded in your heart that this thing will not come to me? Sarah concluded in her heart that, okay, I may not have a child of my own. Maybe God will bless all my handmaids. God will bless my, uh, my maid. God will bless, bless my uh, female servant, male servant with, uh, with children that I can say they are my own. But God said, no, you are going to have your own child. And that is why I'm telling somebody today, your joy is possible. Your peace is possible. Your promotion is possible. Your elevation is possible. It is coming now in the mighty name of Jesus. Said God, is anything too hard for the Lord? And for those of us who are overwhelmed by doctor's reports, there are things they call terminal disease. They say, ah, this one is a terminal disease. So you just have to manage it until uh, the final day come. Praise the Lord. God will visit you. God will change your story. Say, so whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the report of the doctors? Are you going to believe the report of the world? Are you going to be believe the, the report of science? We are going to believe the report of the Lord. The report of the Lord says we are healed. He said by, the, by his stripes we are what? We are healed. The report of the Lord says we are victorious. And I decree to the life of somebody here today, you are victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. What is that thing that they have said? Sarah had concluded in her mind, according to the sciences, According to, to the way it happens, according to the natural law. But there is a God who suspends natural law for supernatural. That God will visit you in the mighty name of Jesus. I say that God will visit you in the mighty name of Jesus. There is another story I want to bring to us. The story of Lazarus, Jesus' friend. Praise the Lord. In the book of John chapter 11, Verse 1 to 45, it's a popular story that we all know. Lazarus was sick. The two sisters, they sent for Jesus Christ. They said, ah, Lazarus is sick, oh. In fact, he has not been able to eat for two days now. Jesus, can you come so that uh, we know when you come, uh, everything will be okay. Jesus said, okay, I am coming. Praise the Lord. But he didn't, he didn't come. Many of few days later, they called him again. Hey, this thing is getting out of hand, yo. He can no longer talk, oh. He can no longer eat, oh. In fact, he has been vomiting. He has been stooling. But Jesus Christ still did not come. Praise the Lord. Another time they say, ah, 
Jesus said, we have had to rush him to the hospital because we don't understand how he is behaving anymore. We have taken him to loot. We have taken him to teaching hospital. In fact, doctors, is att doctors are attending to him now. In fact, he cannot even talk. He cannot lift hand. Jesus Christ said, I have had. Lazarus will be fine. But still, he didn't do what? He didn't come. Praise the Lord. At the point, they said, ah, Lazarus is on life support machine now. In fact, he's in the intensive care unit. They are passing oxygen. They are passing blood. They are passing water. They are passing everything. They told Jesus Christ, still, he did not, he did not come. Until when Lazarus gave up the ghost. And they told him, they said, Jesus Christ, why? Why are you playing with, why are you playing with us like this? Why are you playing with our joy like this? We have told you, your friend has been sick for how many weeks now? You have not, now he is dead. But we know whether, when you come, if you, can, if you can quickly come now, maybe there is something that you can still do. Jesus Christ said, ah, sorry, oh, he didn't come. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He didn't come as they requested. Day one, day two, day three, he didn't show up. Until the fourth day, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then he came. And by that time, they have already buried him. They have concluded that, okay, since Jesus Christ did not come, we know he has power to heal. We know he has power to raise up the dead, the one that has just died. Praise the Lord. But now, we have given up. Maybe Jesus Christ did not want to do it for us. And when Jesus Christ came, they attacked him. The sisters attacked him. That If you had come earlier, we would not be here money. And Jesus Christ said, your brother will live. He said, we know. We know he will live on the resurrection day because he has been a righteous person. Because if you can be a friend of Jesus Christ on earth, eh, maybe you can be his friend in heaven. Praise the Lord. And Jesus Christ said, you people don't understand. I said, your brother will live. Oh, yeah, take me to, to the burial ground. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And while they were going, suddenly it dawned on them that, what, what is this man trying to do? Is he trying to is he trying to do something that is out of hand now? Is he trying to do something that is impossible now? They reminded him, they said, Jesus Christ, in case you are trying to do something for me, eh? He has been dead for four days. By now, he will be what? He will be stinking. My God would have been coming out of him. In fact, you, you can't even go near him because he's been dead for four days. Jesus Christ said, take me to that place. God will use your situation to confound the world. God will use your situation to confound sciences. God will use your situation to confound economic uh, knowledge in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember, if somebody tells you today, if somebody tells you today, petrol is 600 naira per liter now, Abi. If somebody says by this time tomorrow, petrol will go back to 87 naira, what would you say? Eh? Eh? According to, according to normal economics, according to normal science, according to, according to the budget. See, our budget is uh, how many trillions this year? So you will say it is not possible. But God is telling somebody today that that thing that the world has said is impossible. By, the time, by this time tomorrow, they shall be possible in the mighty name of Jesus. What are those prayer requests that you have laid before God? There, there are some that are time-bounded. There are some that you have prayed that by, by the end of 2023, God, I want you to have done this. But we are in 2024 now. To a normal human being, to a normal, a, a rational thinking person. 23, uh, 20, year 2023 has gone. And it has gone. But God that we serve is not a God that, that, that is late. He says, I will do a new thing. All men shall see it. And they will praise the name of the Lord for your sake in the mighty name of Jesus. When they got to the, to the tomb of Lazarus, Jesus Christ said, Lazarus, come forth. When you check the statement of Jesus Christ, he was not negotiating with the dead. 
He was not negotiating with debt. Say, eh, debt. If you can just give me this minute, just uh, eh, try, try and uh, let's see if my if our brother can rise. He wasn't doing that. He didn't do that. He didn't negotiate with debt. Rather, he commanded. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And Bible recorded that he that has been dead for four days came out. And that is why I am decreeing to somebody's life today. I say, your health will come forth in the name of Jesus. Your career will come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Your healing come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Your blessings come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. It does not matter how long the situation has been bad. It does not matter how long you have tarried in that, in, in, in that low place. It does not matter whether your file is number 100. I decree into your life. Come forth in the name of Jesus. Are you struggling with poverty? Are you struggling with ill health? Have you been labeled a permanent failure? You know, there are some of us in our family, they will say, oh, don't worry, whatever we, whatever we say eh, is binding on him. We can't wait for him. Let us just meet. Let us decide. Whatever we have decided, we will tell him. He doesn't have any choice. And has it happened to you? Or is it happening to you? That when they, when, when they are sharing money in the family, they say, ah, I feel it, Leo. Go see Shiloh where? Praise the Lord. If you are in that situation, God will elevate you in the mighty name of The world has labeled you a permanent failure. You are going to your new level in the mighty name of Jesus. Where you will decide. Where you will decide for your, for your brethren. Where you decide for your brothers. Where you will decide for your sisters. Where you will decide for your family. They will say, if he does not come, if she does not come, we cannot have any meeting. That will be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. When my grandmother died, my uncle, who is the, who is the one carrying the financial body, traveled out of the country. We kept my mind in the mortuary for six months until he came. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because they said, ah, if I, we, they had one meeting. That meeting, that meeting ended abruptly. Someone said, if he does not come, there's no point meeting. Because everything that we are going to say, everything that we are going to do, is the one that will decide it. God will raise your level in the mighty name of Jesus. God will change your story in the mighty name of Jesus. People are looking down on you. By this time tomorrow, people will look up to you in the mighty name of Jesus. God will change your story in the mighty name of Jesus. Have you been told that at your age, you cannot have that good thing? Have you been told that that promotion has eluded you because of your age? God will change that story in the mighty name of Jesus. There are times they say, ah, we would have promoted you, but you are past the age of promotion. You know, in government service today, they say some people had reached a level that uh, they call it terminal level. They cannot be promoted. It is, that, it is that level that they are going to retire. Why? Because a lot of things are working against them. Age is working against them. Maybe they are, uh, the, 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 the certificate that they are carrying is working against them. They say, ah, you have reached a terminal. If you are here, God will change your story in the mighty name of Jesus. I have this assurance to give to you that if God sees that your season is over, if, your, if God sees that your season is naturally over, just like that of Sarah, he will change the season in the mighty name of Jesus. How do we know this? How can we substantiate this? Daniel chapter 2 verse 21. Daniel chapter 2 verse 21 says, And he changed the time and the seasons. He removed the kings and set it up kings. He gave wisdom unto the wise. And knowledge unto them that know understanding. He, change, he changes times and season. They have concluded that it is over for you. God will change time and season in your favor in the mighty name of Jesus. They have concluded that you are 
you have gone past the age of promotion. They, they have concluded that it is not a season of promotion. If you are in government service, particularly if you are in a, a Lagos State government service, they promote every four, four years. They, and once you miss one, you have to wait till another, another four years. You have made the one for this year. You won't have to wait for four years in the mighty name of Jesus. Because God is going to change time and season for your sake in the mighty name of Jesus. If the world is boasting that they, have, they, they, they are true with you. If the world is boasting, if the household wickedness is boasting, that they, they, they have concluded your case. God will prove to them that is the owner of time and season in the mighty name of Jesus. Daniel chapter 2 verse 22. Daniel chapter 2, verse 22. He revealed the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in darkness, and the light dwelleth in him. Everything called darkness in your life, bringing about impossibility, bringing about irreversibility in your life, God will deal with them in the mighty name of Jesus. The light of God will shine. Every darkness in your life will vanish in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, there is this song that we usually sing. Where's darkness at the sight of light? And he says something. Evaporated at the glimpse of... See, light has not come. Eh? He said he's going to evaporate at the glimpse. It just looks like light is coming. But darkness would have done what? Would have evaporated. Every darkness in your life, they will evaporate today. And by the light of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Every darkness of backwardness, every darkness of poverty, every darkness of sickness, they will, they will be evacuated today in the mighty name of Jesus. God is the God of impossibility. God is the God of the new level. He will take you there in the mighty name of Jesus. And I'm praying for somebody here today. I pray for an, an expedited reversal of everything that the enemy has stolen from you in the mighty name of Jesus. You ought to have got that promotion five years ago. You ought to have gotten that blessing two years ago. You ought to have gotten that, that, that level ten years ago. I pray for an expedited reversal of all enemy has destroyed in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that God will take you to that new level in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever is that impossible, because God is the God of impossibility, he will change all, all rules in the mighty name of Jesus. The, the, the scripture says, in the days that your world, your world will be rebuilt, he said all laws will be suspended. Every loss, every edit, every pronouncement, only you in a particular place. They are suspended today in the mighty name of Jesus. Every decree of any authority whatsoever, keeping you in a particular position, keeping you in a particular spot, they are suspended today in the mighty name of Jesus. Bible says, who is it that seeth a thing? And it comes to pass. When the Lord has not commanded it, whatever the Lord did not command in your life, that the enemy has put in your life, there will be a reversal today in the mighty name of Jesus. He said, they will surely gather. But their counsel is not of God. And because their counsel is not of God, therefore that, those counsels, they will come to naught. Every evil counsel, every contrary counsel, working against your life, bringing impossibility into your life, bringing shame into your life, bringing reproach into your life, they are suspended today in the mighty name of Jesus. Every counsel that is not of God, they will not stand. Neither shall they come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. The Christian life is no ordinary life. It's not an ordinary natural existence. The Christian life is a supernatural one. And it takes supernatural power to reverse the irreversible. It takes the supernatural power to go against all economic principle. It takes the supernatural power to go against all natural and biological principle. It is natural for a man to start decomposing few hours after death. But it takes the supernatural to bring somebody who has been dead for four days back to life. It takes the supernatural power 
to, to bring dry bones to life. And that is why I'm confident to declare to somebody here today, your dry bones shall come back to life in the name of Jesus. The dry bones of your business, the dry bones of your health, the dry bones of your finance, they will come back to life in the mighty name of Jesus. God asked the man of God, he said, look at these bones, can they come to life? And the man of God knew that he was a sister. He said, God, it is you that know. <laughs> Don't put me in trouble. Let me, not, let me not now say that it is not possible. And you say it is possible. He said, God, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> it is only you that know. And God said, yes, because you know that I know. And I know that these bones, they can come back to life. He said, speak to them. And that is why I'm speaking to every dry bones in your life. Come back to life in the name of Jesus. I said, that dry bone in your finance, come back to life in the name of Jesus. That dry bone in your spiritual life, I decree the life of God into those dry bones. Oh yeah, come back to life in the name of Jesus. Bible said, if the spirit of it that raised up Jesus Christ from death dwell in you, he said, that same spirit will revitalize your mortal body. That same spirit will, will bring back to life whatever has been dead in your life. That same spirit will bring back to life your dead womb. That same spirit will bring back to life your dead business. That same spirit will bring back to life your dead head. That, that same spirit will bring back to life the, your dead brain. That let the spirit that, of Jesus Christ that raising up from death dwell in your life today in the name of Jesus. And everything that is dead in your life, let them come back to life. Now, in the name of Jesus. And this season, you will encounter the supernatural power of God in the mighty name of Jesus. To the point that whatever has been, that has been irreversible in your life, they will come back to life in the name of Jesus. I want you to rise to your feet as we pray this prayer together. The Lord has asked me to pray with you today. As many of us that we are here, there is something in our life that we ourselves, we know that they are impossible. There are some prayer requests that we have placed before God that if they ask us in all honesty, we say, well, I am just praying this prayer. I don't know how it's going to come. I want you to step to the altar. I want you to step to the altar. You have something that you want to bring before God. You have something that is like that, that is an impossibility that you want us to pray together upon. There is, there, there is a prayer request that you don't know how God is going to answer it. There is a project that you don't know how God will bring it to pass. Are you here today? Is, there, is, there, is a particular, there is a particular earth condition that you don't know how God will solve it. Are you here today? The Spirit of the Living God says we should pray together. If you are here with one, one issue or the other that you want us to pray together about, can you step to the altar as we pray these prayers? There is something that you know is impossible. There is something that you know that is difficult to achieve. But you don't know how God is going to go about it. You don't know how it will be achieved. You don't know how, 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 how God will bring it to pass. There is a prayer request in your, in, in your heart that you have been rendering before God that if they ask you, you don't even know how God is going to sort it out. God says we should pray a prayer of agreement together. I want you to hold the person beside you. I want you to hold the person beside you. Let there be a link between everybody. Let there be a link between the second row and the first row. If there, is a, if there is a third row, let there be a link. I want everyone of us to join our hands together. Everyone on the altar, please, I want you to join your hands together. I want you to cry unto the Lord. Say, Father. Say, Father. Shake the heart. And make possible in my life. Everything that has been impossible. Everything that has been difficult. Father, shake your heart, oh Lord. Make it possible. Make it, make it possible. Every difficult thing, every difficult prayer request, every difficult testimony. Father, 
I know you are the God of impossibility. Father, you are the one that can make all the impossible to be possible. Father, in the name of Jesus, shake the hand and reach out to me. Shake the hand and reach out to my situation. Shake the hand and reach out to my circumstances. Change my story in the name of Jesus. Change my story in the name of Jesus. You are the one that can reverse the irreversible. You are the one that can make possible everything that has been tagged impossible. Father, break the heart. Shake the heart and reach out to me. Everything that has been tagged impossible, bring make them possible. You are the God of impossibility. You are the God of new level. You are the God who holds times and season. In the name of Jesus, I agree with my brother. I agree with my sister today. Everything that is impossible, everything that is difficult, you are the one who, is, who specializes in, in, in impossibility. You are the one who specializes in doing the difficult things. Father, visit us today. I agree with my brother. I agree with my sister. Visit us today. Visit us today. Visit us today. That which is impossible, that which is, is, is difficult, Father, visit us with your power. Visit us with your power. Every good thing that is dead in our life, every good thing that is dead in our destiny, every good thing that is dead in our career, every good thing that is dead in our marriages, every good thing that is dead in our family, the spirit of it that raised up Jesus Christ, ah, let it go forth and revitalize. Let the spirit of it that raised up Jesus Christ go forth and bring back to life. In the mighty name of Jesus, that resurrection power, that resurrection might, let it go into every dead situation, every dead blessing, every dead glory in my life. Let them come back to life. The power that brought back the dry bones and gave them life. Every good thing that is dead in my life, let them receive life. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. Let them receive life. Let them receive life. In the name of Jesus. Let them receive life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want you to pray this prayer and I want you to be specific. You know those things that you want God to do. You know those issues that you have brought before God. I want you to mention them. And we are going to give a timeline to it. The man of God, Elijah, said, by this time tomorrow. I want you to prophesy and decree. He said, he, he said, command me in the things that I do. I want you to command God in the things that he does. He is, he is a prayer answering God. He is the one who specializes in impossibility. I want you to say, by this time tomorrow, oh Lord. By this time tomorrow, this Egyptian, I don't want to see them. Egyptians of sickness, Egyptians of failure, Egyptians of backwardness, Egyptians of stagnation. By this time tomorrow, I do not want to see them. Prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Father, by this time tomorrow, this situation, mention them, mention them to God. Those situations that you have brought before God, those circumstances that have been impossible, mention them before God and put a timeline to it. Say, by this time tomorrow, visit me, O Lord. Let every problem be solved. Let every situation be over. Let every circumstances be resolved. In the mighty name of Jesus. By this time tomorrow, every good thing that is dead in my life, come back to life. Come back to life. Jesus Christ did not negotiate with death. He, 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 he gave a command. He said, Lazarus, come forth. I want you to speak to that your situation. I want to speak to that circumstance. Say, come forth. Come forth. In the order of Lazarus. Lazarus has been there for four days. Ah, my situation. This evil circumstance around me. Oh yeah, be changed right now. Be changed right now. Be changed right now. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I want us to raise our hands to God. Let's raise our hands to God as I pray for us today. I want us to raise our hands to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, you know the intent of heart. You see the secret things. You know the secret places. You know the heart of a man. Therefore, O oh Lord, I lift up these ones unto you. 
with the, the issues that they have brought before you, with the circumstances that they have brought before you, with everything that the world has contained in their life, in the name that's above every other name, visit them in the name of Jesus. You said your name has been given unto us that is far above every other name. At the mention of the name of Jesus Christ, that every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. I call upon that name, the name of Jesus, and I stand upon the rock of ages. Every other ground and seeking sand. And I decree to the life of this one. Every evil circumstances around you, they are changed today in the name of Jesus. Everything that is difficult, everything that is impossible, that the enemy has been afflicting you with, in the name that's above every other name, they are lifted in the name of Jesus. Your head that is being afflicted, the evil report of the world that, 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 that is tearing you in the face, in the name that's above every other name, we cancel in the name of Jesus. Every report of cancer, we cancel in the name of Jesus. Every report of hypertension, we cancel in the name of Jesus. Every report of arthritis, we cancel in the name of Jesus. Every report of fibroid, we cancel in the name of Jesus. As many that are holding debt, today, every of your debts, they are cancelled in the name of Jesus. As many of us that we have projects that are dead, whether building projects, whether, uh, whether academic projects, whatsoever project that is dead in your life, let the power of the living God come on those projects. I pray and I decree that they come back to life in the name of Jesus. Every dead womb, oh yeah, come back to life. Every dead business is come back to life. Every dead marriage, come back to life. Every, every stolen peace, every stolen joy. The God who specializes in, in, in reversing the irreversible. Every joy, every blessing that has been taken from you, they are reversed in the name of Jesus. He said, shall I, shall I pursue? Shall I overtake? Will I recover all? And God told him, he said, pursue, overtake, and without doubt, you will recover all. Everything that has been stolen from you, you will recover in the name of Jesus. I say you will recover in the name of Jesus. Your stolen destiny be recovered in the name of Jesus. Your stolen joy be recovered in the name of Jesus. Your stolen job be recovered in the name of Jesus. Every good thing that the enemy has taken from you be restored in the name of Jesus. In hundredfold be restored in the name of Jesus. When God restored Job, his life was far, far better than he started. I say you will be restored in the name of Jesus. Your joy will be full. In these seven super Sundays, God will visit you in the name of Jesus. God will take you to a new level. New level of joy. New level of peace. New level of sound mind. New level of affluence. New level of blessing. New level of good health. New level of healing. In the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let somebody shout a louder hallelujah. If you believe, can we give Jesus a big round of applause as we go back to our seat? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.